So I'm going to be talking about the three secrets to living a life of freedom without giving up your passions, dreams, or aspirations. And I chose this headline very, very specifically. So before I get started, I want to ask you guys, what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your passions? Just put a one word answer in the chat. You know, like when I talk about dreams or I talk about passions in relation to freedom, right? So Coach Phil, you want freedom, but what does that mean, free, uh, Coach Phil? Tell me, Coach Phil, you're speaking tomorrow, I believe, and I want to know from you, what, what does freedom mean to you? To uplift people out of poverty, Fred, that is amazing. Uh, let me know how I can help. What, what's your dream? I know you want to help. Uh, you, you're on your personal mission to achieve all these great things with health and strength and fitness and all of these things. Coach Paul wants to do what he wants, uh, do what I want, when I want, with whom and from where. Hopefully the whom is your wife. Hopefully you have a partner there involved as well. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's only up to you. Rui wants to build a, Rui, Rui wants to build a school and it, uh, on its own sustainable organic community. That's amazing as well financial freedom for Fritz and a fulfilled life. Teshni says, utilizing my time. I will talk about the time thing in a second as well. Fred, life's not about, uh, about ourselves. The more you give out, the more you give back. Yes, in, it, it is true, Fred. I'm testament to that as well. So let's, uh, <laughs> Coach Phil, uh, private messages. Let's, let's go to the, to the whole group, Coach Phil. Um, financial freedom to travel and share my Coaching skills, that's right, Herat. Uh, a lot of people want to travel. Obviously, it's a little bit tricky right now. Uh, yeah, Chart, a world champ powerlifter. I heard you say that earlier as well. Uh, family and friends, good times together and making a difference. Good. So thank you so much for, for, for putting that in the chat. You basically have validated my entire presentation. So it's going to speak to all of you, uh, hopefully. So I want to talk a little bit about sort of you know, if you try to start a business online and fails, it's not your fault. It, it really is not your fault. This is just the way things go. If you try it once, if you try it twice, it's okay. It's not your fault. And if you're concerned, if you haven't tried, but you're concerned that you won't succeed, well, I'm here to tell you that in most cases, we can put your fears to rest. And I say most cases for a specific reason, and I'll cover that a little bit later. And unfortunately, when it comes to putting a business together online, a lot of people are going to try to talk you out of it. A lot of people are going to say, well, you can't actually do that. You need my help. You know, people are going to try to bring you into their family business. You know how the uh, sort of South African culture is. And I'm not knocking on the South African culture, but us entrepreneurs, we want to do things a little bit differently. We want to change the world. We want to uh, sort of zig when everybody else is zagging. And if you've ever thought about the fact that the system, so when I talk about the system, I'm talking about the schooling system, the university system, the education system, just the money system in general, uh, and you feel like it, it set you up to fail, well, you're probably right as well. And I mean, I'm here to show you, I'm testament to the fact that all of these things, all of these things that I've listed, I've been able to overcome them. Um, not, not, not to brag, not to say that, hey, I'm living in Thailand, living the dream with not much COVID happening around me and with not much crime happening around me and, and all of those things that go on. I, I'm just here to say that, well, I've changed my life dramatically uh, six, and seven, six or seven years ago, um, and you can too. All right, so my goal for the session, and I always try to start with a little bit of a uh, intention statement, if I can say, is I want to inspire you. I don't have anything to sell. What I've got on the screen right now is, is my cover art for my blueprint, for my digital coaching blueprint, which is coming out in April. I'm only going to talk about that later on in the presentation. It's not quite ready yet, so there's nothing to sell right now. Don't worry about uh, pulling out your credit cards. I'm not going to ask you to make any payments, um, but I will ask you if you're interested based on what I'm going to tell you right now. But, you know, I just want to inspire people to, to know that, you know, to, you, can, you can actually create an income online and you can actually support your family and you can do the travel and you can earn financial freedom and you can be the world champion uh, power, power lifter chart. Like it is possible to do all of these things. And, and if, if today has uh, taught you anything, if you've hung around for a couple of the other presentations or if you're watching the recording, a lot of the people that have already 
been on the summit and that are coming up after me and tomorrow and the day after are testament to the fact that they are successful in, in some way or the other. Um, and this is why I asked you what success means for you or what, uh, you know, what your dream life looks like for you is because it's not always money. And I don't know if you noticed in the chat, but not a lot of people mentioned money specifically. They said they wanted freedom. They said they wanted travel. They said they wanted big muscles, Chuck. I'm, I'm picking <laughs> on you today. Um, you know, they want health. They want all of these things. And so money is a means to those things. Money is, is the thing that's going to enable us um, to get those things. And hopefully... We can, I can help you to do all of these things without actually wasting time or money um, and help you get results pretty quickly. So uh, I mentioned my digital coaching blueprint. It's, it is the only way, in my opinion, it's the best way. It's, it's what's worked for me. It's what I've put together um, over the last couple of years. So I wanna go into a little bit of my story. Um, I started, uh, we'll start with my, with my business career because that's, kind of what we're talking about here for now. Um, I started at KPMG as an IT auditor. And the way that I got that job actually was uh, I, had, I was working with my dad uh, in, his, in the family business. And because of the sort of the plastic industry going down, I ended up applying through a friend of a friend who gave my CV into one of the partners at KPMG. And he very graciously called me the day before I was going to move to Johannesburg because I was living in, Dur in Durban at the time. Uh, and he asked me to come in for an interview. And he said, uh, he, he, we end up having this discussion and we got a job. And that decision to stay in Durban and actually for me to go to KPMG to work, to, to start my career at, I think I was like 21 or 22 years old. It actually helped to catapult my, my career because I think that was like the foundation of everything that I did. From KPMG, I did a whole bunch of other stuff. I put this PPC, set, uh, PPC bag up, up on the screen because, well, yeah, I used to sell cement as well. So one of, one of my career uh, was also back in with my family business. My dad had a um, essential hardware store. I don't know if they exist still, uh, if that franchise does exist, competitor to build it. But um, we were basically selling cement out in Bergville, Berkville, taught, uh, for the Afrikaans people, um, Bergville out in, in KZN. And uh, yeah, we were selling like pockets and pockets of cement. That was like our stable thing that used to sell. Uh, back then, Facebook was just kind of starting. It wasn't even a thing. The advertising platform had started, but we hadn't quite delved, in, delved into it. And, you know, being a brick and mortar store or being, being a, a physical location, we didn't really need to advertise because, well, people knew us. Next up, uh, I'll talk about the furniture. So I knew that I always had, sort of entrepreneurial blood. I always knew that I was going to make it on my own. I knew that I wanted to do something in the creative field. And you know how motivational speakers, Tony Robbins, all these guys, they all say, oh, you need to combine your passion with something that, uh, that was also going to make money. And I thought back to sort of school days and I was like, hey, I was good at sort of woodworking. And I said to myself, well, how can I make furniture uh, with my woodworking skills and, uh, and how can I actually make money? Thanks, Fred, for letting me know. Essential Hardware, they're, they're a good, uh, good group. And so what I did was uh, I used to go out to the builder's warehouse, used to buy a couple of tools and uh, find customers and, and, and create furniture. And this is a, a bookshelf that I, or a set of drawers, a chest of drawers that I had created um, through this company called uh, Double T Creations that I created. Double T because my surname has double T, two T's, like... Think about like, how do you create a name for your business? Like just look for two T's in your surname. And from there, I started working online. I, there's lots of gaps in the story, but basically I found an opportunity online a couple of years ago. It's about seven years ago through a company called Upwork. Who some of you may be familiar. Who in the chat, let me know if you're familiar with Upwork and if you've used the service. Um, I started an Upwork at, at $11 an hour. I uh, posted my, my product or my my uh, profile on, on Upwork. And I said to myself, well, what can I do? And when I had my furniture factory, I got all my clients through Facebook and through Gumtree. I don't know if Gumtree is still available these days, but yeah, I was like, okay, all of this online stuff is coming to me. Like I've got clients coming to me and messaging me on Facebook. 
maybe this is a skill. And so I went on Upwork and I, and I looked at Upwork and I said, oh, maybe I can actually translate some of these selling tools or some of the selling skills uh, that I know uh, into a business or into, into a freelance career, actually. And so that's what I did. I basically worked on Upwork for a, for a, for a, for a time. And then I found this article or this book um, by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, and he, he talks about outliers. And that's why I say, you know, we're the crazy ones. We're the entrepreneurs. We're trying to change the world. He talks about us as outliers and the fact that, you know, we, we do things a little differently. But in that book, he mentions uh, a thing which a lot of people have actually contested over the years. But he's, he, he came down to, you know, he spoke to a lot of people over the years in his research in, in writing the book. And also Malcolm Gladwell is actually a very intelligent, very well-written person. Um, and he spoke about this concept of the 10,000 hour rules, a rule, meaning in order to become a master at something, you need to have put 10,000 hours of time, of effort, of energy into that thing. So if you think about uh, a painter, an artist, somebody who makes, maybe does portraits, um, you're talking about 10,000 hours of painting before you can consider yourself being a master. Now, if you did a, if you did a quick calculation, that's something like four years or three and a half years or whatever at like a hundred hours a week or something ridiculous. And so when I found this book and I read this, this passage that talks about the 10,000 hour rule, I was like, okay, I'm getting paid online, uh, on Upwork on an hourly rate. At that point, I was just a brand new newbie like trying to do this digital marketing social media marketing facebook advertising thing and i was like okay in order to be called an expert in order to uh put that title on my name to be able to show up for these summits to be able to speak to hundreds and hundreds of people or 95 specifically on this particular summit uh, summit right now um i need to put the hours in and so i did a calculation i was like okay that's like three four years somewhere there well, if I, instead of doing 80 hours a week or 40 hours a week, I said, well, I'm going to do a hundred, I'm going to do 120. And I was like, okay, well, if I can shorten that 10,000 hour rule down or the, the three hour gap, three year gap into a shorter amount of time, um, then that's going to be amazing because then I can actually up level myself quicker, right? Cause that's what it's all about. Like we're all fighting time. We're all fighting this thing of speed. And so as soon as I clocked the hours and I'm putting inverted commas, um, I hope you can see that I registered my company. And so it wasn't quite like, oh yeah, I got the 10,000 hours. Now I can register my company. It just kind of happened by chance. It just kind of happened by almost accident because from the day or two weeks after I put my profile up on Upwork, I got my first client. And from there, I had never been uh, quiet. I'd, I'd never had a day where I didn't have any work, even on weekends. So I could say that for the last six or seven years, I've been going nonstop 24 seven. Well, not necessarily always 24 seven, but you know, a good part of my working day has been busy with, uh, with clients. And when I registered my company, I took my name off of Upwork because um, the hourly um, sort of model didn't quite work for me. And, you know, I came to Thailand um, in and amongst all of that sort of rigmarole of leaving South Africa. And I'll talk a little bit about that story in a, in a second here. Um, but to give you the back, the back story there is, so uh, six, seven years ago, I was sitting broke and I was kind of divorced uh, or going through a divorce at the time. And I was reading another book, Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Workweek. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that book. Um, and he talks about this, you know, freedom lifestyle. And he talks about, uh, he spoke about sort of traveling the world, living in Thailand, living around the world, and sort of almost geo arbitraging your time where, you know, you could choose the place that you wanted to live. You could have the things that you wanted. Um, and it doesn't actually have to cost you a lot of money. And so from reading that book, it was December, uh, 2014 or 2015, I believe. And, uh, 2014 actually. And I was like, well, I'm going to give myself a day, a hundred day goal to buy me a one-way ticket and to fly to Bali because I wanted to be in Bali for six weeks for my birthday, which is in April, and then come to, to Bangkok as my final destination here in Thailand. And this, and, and basically uh, the long story short is I actually achieved that. Like 
I'm 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 sitting here on Zoom right now. You guys probably don't know where I am. It probably doesn't make sense to you because you can't see a beach behind me. There's this, you know, I've got my uh, I've got my office going on here. But this is me and my girlfriend. Uh, we're uh, this is at Krabi, one of the islands in in Thailand, and you can see the water is just kind of rising um, uh, with with the tide there. And this is actually a spot where there's two islands that are actually separate to each other. And uh, at certain times of the day, they're not connected because the water is is above. Happy birthday in April, Plantina. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, Jeanette, uh, that's not far from Phuket. Krabi, Phuket, not far from each other. You can take a boat between, between the two places. So how does this actually apply to you? Well, I was in your situation. Like if you are in South Africa, in Johannesburg, even if you're in the Indiana, um, you know, in, in the US and you want to do the travel thing. Sure. You know, it's, it's challenging situations right now with, with COVID and, and things, but you know, it's, I was in your situation. I, I was where you are now. If you're, if you're wanting to do the things online, if you're wanting to start your business online, I can relate to you because this is where I was not too long ago, if you really think about it. And I started from scratch. Like I said, I was going through a divorce at the time before I came to Thailand. Um, I was, I basically had no money. I, I, I was borrowing money to actually put fuel in the car to take my, my ex-wife to work, right? She used to work at Melrose in, in Johannesburg and uh, we were living in Marlboro. And so, you know, I was like, honey, I need to take you to work. Like, I don't have money to put fuel in the car. Can you, can you like help me out? She had a job um, and, I, and I, I was trying to figure out this online thing. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's like, when you're trying to figure the online thing, it, it can sometimes take years, it can sometimes take months, but you don't have to because, you know, there are people out there like me, like Chart, like Corbus, who have figured some of this stuff out. Some of the other speakers as well uh, have spoken about internet marketing. And, you know, we've tried it. We've, we've tried what works. We've seen what works. Um, and, you know, we are testament that you can actually shortcut. And if, if you're willing to learn, if you're open to understanding what works and what doesn't work, Sure, your situation might be different. Your situation, your business might be different, but there are true, uh, tried and true methods that actually work. If you listen to uh, Stephen and Vinesh earlier today, they spoke about sales and how sales is the same. It has been the same for forever and it's going to be the same. The only difference selling online is the medium is different. Like I say to my clients all the time that the internet, and let me know in the chat if you agree with this, is the internet is actually a giant telephone. Where in the past, we used to use the telephone to call people to make appointments. Now we're using Facebook. Now we're using Messenger. Now we're using WhatsApp. Now we're using Zoom to actually have our meetings, uh, 13 and 100%. So, you know, it's, it's just a giant communication device. There's no... You know, there's nothing complicated about it. It's just a different medium. There's a lot more buttons than, you know, the nine or 12 buttons that used to be on the dial-up phones. Uh, but Ashraf, you agree with me, right? It's, it's, it's pretty much the, the truth. Like if you really had to simplify everything down, um, it's just a giant tele telecommunications device. And what's also amazing is it's given us access to the whole world and at a fraction of the cost. Because I remember when my parents used to travel overseas, um, and they were Muslim, so you know, traveling to Saudi Arabia for pilgrimage, or they were, or they were going to places around the world. And I was still in school. Like we used to dial, and we used to wait for like a minute until the phone used to ring on the other side. And then, when they answer, you ask them, "Hey, how are you?" And you wait for half a minute until the person says, "I'm fine. How are you?" <laughs> and then you wait for the reply <laughs> it was so annoying <laughs> but you know in a very short space of time i'm obviously talking about 20 years ago but in that time technology has sped up sped up to a point where i'm instant like i'm basically saying my words to you right now and it's hitting you in johannesburg in your ears in you know you can hear me uh in illinois in 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 uh, in different parts of the world in uganda where where you guys are almost in real time. And that's just amazing. And so when you take the technology and you actually create a business for yourself, um, then, that's, then that's what's possible, right? 
Um, and with all of this, right, the, the challenge is consistency. And it doesn't matter whether you're building a, a business online or whether you're building, uh, you're, you know, you're getting into sales or whether you're um, wanting to be a speaker or you're a, or a doctor or, you know, whatever your profession is, we are all as entrepreneurs, as business owners fighting consistency. Um, I'll talk about the other challenge later on in my presentation, but we're all fighting consistency. And the rest of, you know, the rest of the presentation or, or secret number one, I mentioned in the title that we've got three secrets here. So the first secret is actually to build your business. Hello, it's not a secret. We know we want to do it. But the second secret here is the technology. And the third secret here is how to make time even when you don't have it. So in my opinion, these are sort of the three challenges. One is to actually bring your business online. Two is to actually work all the technology because apparently the technology is challenging for people. And three is the time because the killer of consistency is time. Johanna says, I agree. We function at work and from home on, on internet and phone. 100%. And because of the technology, because of Steve Jobs, because of all those entrepreneurs who created these systems and these processes before us, we now have the ability or we've had the ability for the last couple of years to be able to turn this into, uh, into success, whatever the success means for you. All right. So let's talk about building the business online. Some people think that, you know, they don't know how it's going to work for them because, oh, it's maybe it's difficult or, you know, uh, they don't understand how. Well, you know, you don't have to worry about that too much because I'm, you know, I, I spoke about, about what I've done. I, I spoke about in 2014, how, you know, I was trying to learn this thing and I'll give you, I'll go even further back. When I was at university at WITS, I did information systems specifically to learn business on the, in, not necessarily on the internet, but just business systems, how to use technology to actually function on, on uh, and, and get sort of work done. And obviously the internet was a part of that. And I went to university to, 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 to learn this, right? So I spent four years at WITS. Uh, it should have been three, but I was partying in the first year. Um, and, you know, back in, back in 2014, when I actually came back to online and I, I mentioned I, I was doing Facebook stuff and selling furniture and all of these things, I was like, hey, this is a challenge. Like, uh, South African internet was an issue. I, uh, I couldn't speak to my clients all the time. Uh, I used to be at McDonald's, uh, you, you know, like trying to earn us dollars. Like I knew that I wanted, wanted to make us dollars. Um, ESCOM was an issue like with the load shedding and I, and it's still going on right now. Um, Corbus mentioned that I left South Africa because of faster Wi-Fi. It's true. It is partly true. Um, I have an amazing internet connection here, which allows me a, a lot of flexibility in my work. Um, and, you know, because of all of this, because of thankfully McDonald's having free Wi-Fi, if you bought a coffee back in 2014, I was actually able to, to earn my, my first dollar. So we're obviously in 2021 and things are a lot better now. Um, maybe the ESCOM thing is still an issue. Maybe the Wi-Fi thing is still an issue, but you know, McDonald's still has free Wi-Fi, <laughs> so you have no excuses. There's no reason why you can't get this done. And if somebody like me, somebody who started from zero, who used to borrow money to put, put money in the car to take my, my ex-wife to work, you can do it too. So I want to talk about a, a client quickly. And actually Mitch uh, is also a very good friend of mine. Um, one of the things that allowed, like when I was on Upwork, Mitch actually contacted me on Upwork and he was like, Hey, I need some help with some business stuff. I need some help with some funnels, marketing funnels, sales funnels. Um, and like, can you help us? And so through my profile on Upwork, I was able to work with him and, and put, put, you know, put processes for him in place. And we ended up working together, collaborating on a lot of stuff and actually made quite a bit of money from, from that relationship. Now, what's interesting about Mitch is that he wasn't just an ordinary guy because he runs the advertising campaigns on YouTube and Facebook and Google for Brandon Bashad. Now, if I hadn't gone online to, to register my profile on Upwork, I wouldn't have been in a position to have a friend who basically talks to Brandon Bashad every single day. 
I want to put that into perspective. Let me know in the chat, what do you guys think about that? Like just the fact that I made the decision to put up a shitty ass profile on Upwork with no experience, without, with very little knowledge of actually how to do business online seven or six years ago, I was able to form this relationship. And, you know, we think, oh, we have to be masters. I spoke about the 10,000 hour rule. At that point, when I met Mitch, I hadn't had the 10,000 hours yet. I basically registered my business while I was in this relationship with him. And so Fred, you know, I'm not saying I'm brilliant, but it was just, I guess the universe putting the stars together or connecting the dots or whatever you want to call it. And because I made the decision to start doing something on the internet, it kind of happened. It, you know, it's they, they say you've got to be in the right place at the right time. Well, the right place right now is the internet and the right time is now. In fact, I want to talk about another client. So this was, uh, this is uh, Tim and his wife. Um, they're in Illinois, actually, uh, which is funny. They're, they're in Fort Wayne and they're dog breeders, right? So you think about sort of people who are um, providing a service to, to, to people who actually want a puppy um, and, they, and they breed these puppies on the internet. Super, super cute, um, super tiny, super small. And people want pets all the time. And now it's, you know, it's different in the US because, you know, while you can't go to the vet and you can't go to the, to the, to the local sort of pet shop, you know, being online, there's a, there's an advantage of actually being able to show your uh, puppies on the internet. And so when he found me funny enough through LinkedIn, uh, through a mutual connection, and uh, he was like, I want to get my business on, on the internet. And I said to him, well, do you have a system? Like, what's your process for selling puppies? And it was like, ah, he gets a phone call every now and then. And then he has like post-it notes where he writes the phone number down. And then when he remembers to call them, he like picks up the phone and says, hey, I got a puppy for you. I can't remember your name, but do you want one? And I was like, dude, like that's not a process. That's, that's like kind of you wishing for, for sales. And you've got like 10 puppies that were just born yesterday. And now when you're trying to sell them to put them into homes, how do you manage that? Like, how do you, how do you actually do this? And he was like, well, it's working. I was like, it's not working. Like you don't have a system. You need a system. So he had no email list, right? Everybody talks about email lists when you're building a business on the internet. He had no email list. He had no knowledge of sort of how to actually get this business up and running. He had a website, but it was kind of like, it was dog shit. Like I, sorry for the language, but it was, it was quite terrible. And uh, like I said, he had no experience in building his own business. He had you know, he was working for a company that they did a lot of business online, but he wasn't in the development phase uh, uh, state of that business. And he didn't, he wasn't involved with the website. He actually had no idea how they actually got that business off the ground, despite the fact that he was working in the business. And so when Tim called me, he was like, this is the situation. I asked him a bunch of questions as a, a, in a discovery call. And I was like, look, you know, let's get your website rebuilt. So we, we, you know, we, created a brand new WordPress uh, site. We put in a sales process on that website where, you know, if a lead actually found a puppy that was interesting or that's something that a uh, puppy that they wanted, that they were put in the form and that, that, that lead would one, go to his phone, right? Because when you have a lead, you want to be notified. And two, went into a system. So a CRM called Active Campaign. Some of you may be familiar with it. But we basically use the CRM functionality where any new leads that came into his pipeline, he was able to see that directly and be able to call the person from the phone immediately when the person filled in the form on the website. So it was kind of like this real time process where he knew exactly who was on his website. If they filled in the lead form or, or they filled in the contact form, we knew which puppy they were looking at. We knew what, you know, how hot they were because if they were on the list before, uh, then, you know, obviously this is somebody that's, that's more interested, warmer. And we knew how many times they came to the website before because of the tracking. And so, um, you know, I helped him with his business and this, we made his website in January last year, just before the pandemic started. And last year he did $90,000 worth of, uh, of puppy sales. And um, he's got something like 4,000 people coming to his website organically every single month. I haven't even mentioned the fact that we started his website or with Google ads to get it going because 
in my opinion, running the Google ads was beneficial, but it, it didn't really contribute to his success. Like people are always saying, oh, you need to run advertising. And we ran advertising for the summit. But in this case, uh, because of this niche, it wasn't necessary. All right. So you might also be thinking that you don't understand all the technical stuff. And I mentioned that technology is sometimes difficult. And if you're like this cat and you don't want to learn technology, yeah, I get it. But you know what? The truth is you've got to start somewhere. If I could work at the McDonald's at two in the morning to figure this out, so can you. Obviously, you don't need to because maybe hopefully you've got an internet connection at home that's actually better than what I had six or seven years ago. But if you have that internet connection and if you have a laptop, then you can do this. Like it's really not that difficult. And what's beneficial is what's, what's nice. Like I said, everything's in real time or we're close to real time. Zoom is one of the easiest tools that, that's, you know, that makes meetings easy. It's everything is getting easier. I haven't coded anything on my websites. This website I made for Tim that I mentioned earlier, I did no coding at all, nothing. I log in, I go and check the stats and that's it. Like the client doesn't need to do any coding either. So I helped him build his website without actually knowing coding. Like how freaking amazing that is, is that. And the truth is you actually don't need a website. Like I said, I started on Upwork. If you start with a LinkedIn profile, you could have just a, a, a Google form. And if you say, hey, I offer these services, are you interested? You, you message them directly, you DM them, you send them a Zoom link. Hey, let's jump on a chat, you know, let's book a time and let's, let's speak. People, while a website is necessary later on in your life, it's not really necessary to get started. And, you know, same thing with Facebook, same thing with Instagram, same thing with Pinterest. Like all these tools exist and all things are, all, all of these tools are free for us to use and for us to leverage, to be able to create uh, the business and also the life we want. So let's talk a little bit about the tech. And uh, we, I put this image up as, as like SEO because like SEO, search engine optimization, it sounds like this hectic, you know, uh, scientific, complicated, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Like I said earlier, the technology is not difficult and you don't have to start with SEO. You can start with something very, very basic. And I want to share a little bit again, like you'll notice that a lot of the stories are me because I am my, my I am my own best case study. <laughs> um, so, you know, I built my first, six, first website when I was 16. Um, I went to Wits, like I mentioned, to actually learn more about it, to learn more about business. I spent seven years to figure out all of the stuff to actually learn digital marketing, to learn the psychology of sales. Um, you know, some of the stuff that, that Stephen and uh, Vinesh were talking about earlier, I've learned, I've read the books, I put the time in, I've built my business through LinkedIn, I built my business through Facebook, I've built my business through Facebook ads. Um, you know, all of these things are possible, but again, it's today it's easier, right? You've got YouTube to learn from for free. You've got these seminars and I'll talk about how we actually put the seminar together in a little bit here. So this is all free information. Some people are selling, yes. We have products to sell as well because the summit can't, like we need to be able to sustain the summit in some way, but there are free webinars, which a lot of the speakers are gonna be promoting as well. There's Facebook, you know, the Facebook groups, especially if you join the free Facebook groups and you just ask questions or you go and, you know, you, you look and you go and consume some information. You, you learn just by osmosis because you're spending time. And so there's no, there's no reason why you can't get it done. And, you know, one of the other things, and, and, I'm, and I put this together with the technology piece, because when it comes to creating video and actually creating content, because there's two things you need when you're, when, you, when you're online. One is you've got to be able to speak to people on the internet. Yes. But you also got to be able to create content. And I mentioned the camera specifically because video, uh, let me know in the chat if you agree with me or not, video is king. Video is the thing that is going to get you on the map. This uh, seminar is live and this is on video. Like I, you can see my face. You can't see the beach. 
I'm sorry, it's nighttime here already. I live in Bangkok, there's no beach. But video is the thing, right? So you need a good internet, internet connection. Amanda agrees, uh, Plantina agrees, Fred agrees, Janet agrees, thank you. And so, you know, you need to be good on camera. And I put that together with the technology piece because well, cameras today are complicated. I don't know about you, but you know, when I used to have my flash camera that actually I used to put the film in and maybe you're not old enough to remember this chart, maybe you remember and Kubus may remember, but we used to like, you know, put the camera, like put the film in and make sure that we don't open the film too much because otherwise we're gonna expose the whole thing. And uh, that was easy, right? Putting the film in and you just close the door, you, you know, you, you, you ratchet it, you like dial it in a little bit and then you point and it's like, click. Okay, and then you, you zoom, 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 you know, you push it over again, click. Today, come, there's more buttons on the, on, the, on the camera today and on your phone than, I don't know, like it's, it's complicated, but it doesn't have to be, right? So again, a quick story. So uh, Fritz asked about podcasting. So yes, this is the point is you can actually choose the type of content you want to create. And while you want to do video, if you're okay with video, if you're good with video, that's fine. If you're a writer and if you want to write, go on to medium.com and start blogging. You don't even need to register a website. You can go on to medium.com, register yourself uh, as a writer and start writing stuff. Or if you want to do articles on LinkedIn as a writer, you can do that. <laughs> Martina remembers the, the cameras we used to like scroll the, 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 I'm old. I'm, I apologize. Um, if you're, if you want to do podcasting, yes, you know, audio consumption is rising. There's a reason why Spotify spent $20 million or was it $200 million. I think it was $200 million on Joe Rogan to bring him over from YouTube. There's a reason they did that is because audio is uh, here to stay. And so again, it's like, choose your format. If you don't wanna be on camera or you don't have the equipment, or maybe you can't afford the equipment, equipment yet, 35 pictures on a reel. <laughs> yeah, Ajita, uh, Ajit. Um, yeah, so choose, choose your format and then just start publishing. And take control of your time. Because again, what I mentioned earlier is the consistency you need uh, as an entrepreneur, it's directly related to the time. Because if you're not in control of your time, then social media, TikTok, YouTube, they are gonna consume your life. They are designed to keep you hooked on those things, just like a drug, just like, a, 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 uh, just like the coffee, just like what Chris mentioned earlier, the sugar, they are all built to keep you addicted. And if you are a business owner, you have to learn to, Identify those triggers and eliminate them from your life so that you can actually build the thing you want. And I'll tell you a quick story about live streaming. So obviously we are live. Um, I just want to check how much time I have left. Chad, how am I doing on time? Uh, 620. You're still doing good. I think you have a, a few minutes still left. Uh, the next session only starts 10 past five. So you have until about okay. five. Thanks, Kubus. Kubus to the rescue. That's why he's Superman. So live streaming. So I had this fear of the camera. I won't lie. I know I look good right now. I shaved today. I did my hair. I know like this image is better, but it wasn't always like this. About a year ago, I bought my son a PlayStation and, you know, super excited. He was, um, he's still in South Africa with his mom. And I was like, well, I need to get a PlayStation 2 because that's going to be our connection point. So he plays uh, Fortnite and a whole bunch of other games online. And so I was like, well, I want to spend time with my son. And I also want to like experience this fun that he's having with him. But then I also said, well, I want to live stream on Twitch. And if you're not familiar with Twitch, Twitch is live streaming for gamers. There are also other, you know, sort of, type of types of content, but 90% of Twitch is gaming. And so I went live on Twitch for two to three hours, almost every single day for about three months. And I was being goofy, playing, you know, playing with my son. We had people coming in the chat. We had, it was just like a fun experiment 
where I could just be free because Twitch is very like, you know, production quality doesn't have to be high. Obviously you get called out for being looking like a moron or because your eyebrows are thick or whatever the case may be. Like people are strange in that, in that sense, because, you know, I mean, look at me, right? I look like a Neanderthal and people say so, but you know what? It's Twitch and I'm here to have fun. And so that's what I did. I basically spent time on Twitch, played with my son, built a relationship with him and I got used to the camera. And so that's why I can speak to you like this. Uh, I'm not conscious of the fact that so many people are, are on live with me because you know what? You guys are important, but it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not internalizing the fact that there's so many people. I don't know if that makes sense. Let me know in the chat if that makes sense. So again, another case study. Um, this is a client who also had issues with technology. She had issues with uh, the camera too. Her name is Jessica and she is an occupational therapist. Now, if you know occupational therapists, they're very introverted. She is kind of in, uh, entrepreneurial, but thanks, Chad. Appreciate the comment. Um, Jessica is very introverted and she's an occupational therapist. So she's very, she's a different, like entrepreneurial mindset, but not, not, not typical A type, right? She's achiever type, but not like, not like Steven, not like me, not like us who want to be, uh, you know, big bodybuilders when we're 80 years old, right? Chad, I'm picking on you today. I'm sorry. And so she had this real fear. She had this real fear and she wanted to put a course together and she wants to do content and she wants to do all of these things because she knows in order to make money online, she has to do all of these things. And it was a challenge. And so when she met me, she was like, Hey, I have 3,500 people on my list because she was blogging for a long, long time before that. Um, and she had done seminars like speeches and things in person, but she was afraid of the online uh, world. Um, and she was like, eh, can you help me sell my course? And so the, for the first, the first thing I did was, well, let's figure out what your course should be. And I helped her actually put this, the, the course together and I helped her put the process together to make sales uh, for the course. And so the course is fully online. She runs a webinar uh, every month or every two months, uh, either live or it's evergreen. We've, we've, put it, we've put it together so that, you know, there's an option. And uh, from her list and from some of the advertising that we did, she generated $50,000 in the last five months. The course is a $347 program. And this is again, like a brand new product, right? It, it was basically an idea. And when she met me, she was like, how, 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 how am I going to get all this done? And I was like, don't worry, we'll take you through the process. It's actually super simple. And so because of that, um, she was able to bring her business, um, uh, put a business together. And so, you know, you might also be thinking that you don't have the time. And I spoke about the time. I don't know if you can see the theme through the two secrets before this and some of the preview preview of the secrets is the time thing is a major, major challenge. I've spent the last maybe two or three months interviewing entrepreneurs, uh, interviewing doctors and coaches and entrepreneurs all around the world. And Everybody wants time, but they're just sitting and watching Netflix all day. It's like, oh, we got lockdown. Oh, you know what? The, uh, what's this? Queen's Gambit is on. It's eight, eight, uh, what's it? One season or two seasons. And hey, you start that and it's like eight to 10 hours is gone of your life. I know it happened to me, right? These tools, these systems, Netflix and Facebook and TikTok, all these things, they're designed to keep you connected. They're designed to help to get you to consume. And if Kobus and Chart and all the other speakers around me have said, uh, the common theme with all of us is that we have to get into creation mode. We have to get into uh, con uh, not consumption. We have to be giving. We have to give value. We have to show up and we have to teach and we have to create things. We have to do videos. We have to do podcasts, Fred. I hope you're launching that soon. And uh, we've got to get away from all of these things that are consuming us. We're not consuming it, they're consuming us. And so the truth is, you know, uh, you've just got to adjust a few things. And a lot of you have mentioned, a lot of the speakers mentioned uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger said that you've got to sleep faster. I think Chart mentioned that earlier. But he also said that 
if you had to do a study of your time, what you're spending your time on, and you actually analyze like how much time you're wasting, without a doubt, even Elon Musk could find 15 to 20 to an hour of his day to, to do something more. Like this is a man who wants to go to Mars and I guarantee you there is at least five minutes that he's wasting. Maybe he needs to sleep faster. Maybe he needs to go to the toilet faster. Maybe he needs to whatever. But like we're not on that level with Elon Musk. Like there's no, uh, there's not a lot of people that are at that level, but we, like you and I are ordinary people. The way that I got to Thailand was I committed and I said to myself, well, in those hundred days, I'm going to do whatever I needed to do to find a way to get here. And it was because I put the time in, I did the research, I made the money to buy the ticket. I, I did all the things, I found the clients I needed to find so that when I landed in Bangkok, even though I had a bank balance of like less than, uh, I think it was two or 3000 rands that were in my bank account when I got to Bangkok, uh, I had the clients lined up because I had done the work before. And, you know, like it's not all doom and gloom. Um, there are trainings, there are tools, there's systems, there's YouTube, there's, there's all these things that we can refer to. There are speakers that are offering free trainings. A lot of us has, have shared our contact details, you know, message us, connect with us on, on social, ask your questions. We are going to be on, on Quibus and Quibus uh, is on Clubhouse almost every day. Uh, and if you want to ask questions from the, some of the speakers, we are going to be on those uh, platforms, you know, a, a lot to share free information. So the time thing is, you know, the last point in my, in my presentation, and I think I have a little bit still to go, but some people are saying, you know, they don't know how to find the time. And then, so I gave you a little bit of an antidote um, of how to actually find the time is to basically do a study of your week. Maybe use an app, maybe you just write down sort of activities, maybe use a calendar, um, but you can definitely find some of the time. And hey, this summit came together because of this concept that I'm about to share. And the concept is who. So one of the ways that you can actually leverage time is like I said, look at your time and figure out how you can expand your or use your time better. The other way is like, well, who can help me with the thing that I'm trying to work on? Right? Who has the skill? Who has the uh, knowledge? Who has the experience? Who has put in the 10,000 hours to be the master to do the thing that I want to do? Like, why should you spend a year to learn Facebook ads when there are people on the planet that get, can run your ads for you? Why should you, uh, you know, spend the time to learn how to build a website and code a website when there are people all around the world that can help you build a website? Like, if that's not your skill, if that's not your primary thing, why should you waste time on it? If you want to run a summit, speak to us. We'll help you run your summit. We put the summit together in less than 10 days. And all the speakers in less than 10 days. Nothing was organized. We didn't even have a domain name. Next Level Events wasn't even a name. We thought of the name like, was, I don't, like 10 days ago, eight days ago, something like that. The first two days of us putting, like coming together as, a, as an organizing committee for this event, we were trying to figure out what the name of this event was. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on that, actually. But yeah, I mean, if you've got the right people around you, if you have a support system, then the who in your life can actually create uh, time for you. And you're not trying to copy yourself because copying yourself, you're just going to create another version of yourself that can do the same thing as you can. You want to use other people who can leverage skills that you don't have to actually put the thing together. And so when it, you know, when it comes to putting a business online, you I mentioned you don't need a website, but eventually you will need to because people are going to search for you. You know, you need to figure out how to work your LinkedIn. You need to figure out how to connect with your clients. You need to figure out Zoom. You need to figure out how to collect payments. Like all of these little, little steps. If you connect with people who know how to do all of those things, that can speed things up for you. So another thing that, uh, that people uh, might say is that they don't know how to find the right people. And I mentioned Upwork before. I mentioned, uh, I may not have mentioned Fiverr, but if I V E R R, these are two uh, resources that you can actually use to find people. And if you go on uh, Upwork, and I'm going to 
quickly try to switch my screen here. So this is Upwork, and I apologize for being, being a little small, but this is Upwork, and this is one of the pages that they have. And if you're looking for, let's say, a 3D animation guy, like there's people here that could do that. You know, look at this list. This list is huge. Like pretty much any type of skill that you want. You need somebody to do business analysis. There's a person for that. You need somebody to write a book for you, right? Uh, chart, if you ever you want to publish a book, go find somebody to publish a book for you. Like find a ghostwriter. You don't need to write the book yourself, right? If you want to uh, figure out your credit repair, uh, I there's consultants here that can help you. Like the, one of the tools that I use to build mark, uh, funnels, click funnels. There are people that specialize in click funnels. Like click on this and go find somebody. Or if you're looking to start your business like I did on Upwork, go and look at this list and make a list of the things that you think you could do and post a job. Post your profile on here and start making some money on Upwork. Because it, you, know, you can be a freelancer and start your business the way I did. And that, that might be the start of you working for somebody who knows Brandon Bichard. I mean, that's how I started. Like I said, I'm the perfect case study. And so, you know, I mean, I just showed you Upwork. There are already people doing the thing that you want to do or that you need help with. And so I want to ask you a question. Are you guys enjoying the talk so far? Let's take a, let's take a second. Let me know in the chat. How are things? How are you? How are you feeling? Ashraf, are you good? Sifiso, are you good? Hassan, come on, Hassan. Hassan is one of the panelists, actually. He's going to be speaking after me. Rosemary, Chris, you guys are good? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Lolika, thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's amazing. Thank you, Chap. You got to give me some fitness tips. I've been working on my fitness this week. It's one of, the, one of my goals. All right, so just to summarize, uh, secret number one, how to build a profitable business online. Number two, how to work out all the tech stuff. Number three, how to make time when you don't have it. And that brings me to ask you this question. Who wants to take things to the next level? Tell me who. Say yes in the chat. Ferdinand asks, what is the best way to get traffic to my website? Good question. All right. So let's go through a little bit of Q&A. Um, Ferdinand, you asked about traffic. So traffic is an interesting thing. If you've got your funnel, if you've got your process built on your website, getting traffic, there's organic ways, there's paid ways. We, for the summit, because we had a shortage of time, uh, we did post on, on LinkedIn, we did post on Facebook, we created the group, we have all of these things going, but we leveraged Facebook ads. And so again, another way that you can actually leverage time uh, is advertising, whether it's Google or Facebook, depending on your business. So you know, when you, when you need traction, when you need to test your offer, when you need to test your website, then, um, then yeah, Facebook advertising is, is your friend, but organic works as well. If you don't have the budget for that, let me know if you've got any questions, uh, guys, Marlon, thanks for the, thanks for the comment. Lots of people are agreeing chart. Do you have any specific questions? Yeah. If you want to do no, like a no, panel, I, think, uh, I really enjoyed your talk. It's, uh, it's practical. It is like uh, uh, Ferris's books. You can mm. understand it. You can apply it. Um, lots of tips and tricks and tools. Uh, and the stuff obviously works. You know, I, I got one or two things here, which I'm going to start applying as from today, you know, nice. with all my other stuff. Um, uh, because I've got a few businesses going and sometimes it feels like I'm chasing too many rabbits and I'm not catching any one of them. Um, so I enjoyed it. And, and one can do things faster. The Creativity of Society a few years ago um, uh, at, at their conference, and they wrote and published a book within 18 hours. Wow. You know, so why? Because all of them got in, they planned it well, they started, they got everybody lined up, the printers, the writers, the editors and everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you just opened that up to us again, you know. I think I haven't looked at Upwork for, for a long time. And, and obviously that's what I must do when I want to write my book. Is, uh... You know, what's funny is that there's lots of resources now. Like Upwork is, is the place I started. And so I always go back there. I'm loyal to Upwork because that was my foundation. I did 
I think I did a tally uh, last year, the year before, I did over $300,000 in Upwork while I was uh, billing hourly. Um, so, you know, I surprised myself when I did that calculation. Um, so I'm loyal to it because of that, uh, but there's lots of places uh, to find people. Um, you can even run Facebook ads to a specific place and put up a job and ask people, or you can go into Facebook groups. Like you don't have to, you know, use Upwork because that's the, 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 the place. Um, Chris asks, how do I keep myself motivated by doing the same thing online, emails, etc.? Well, Chris, if you're doing something that you're not motivated for, the buy, if you're sending emails, if you're doing, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing email marketing, let me know. Um, and you're not enjoying it. Are you doing the email writing or are you just sending the emails out for your clients? Um, you know, motivation is an interesting thing because for me, if I wasn't motivated by what I was doing, I definitely would, would still not be doing this right now. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's motivation is yeah, email marketing to the clients. So, you know, if you're a writer and you enjoy writing, then that's going to motivate you. If it doesn't motivate you, you know, go find something else. Because digital marketing is huge. Like I showed you that list on Upwork and that's a published uh, page. I'm actually going to drop it in the chat for you guys right now. Um, you can go look at all the different jobs, literally make yourself a list from that page and go and see what you're capable of doing. And if you go find companies that have actually advertised for those jobs, you go see what they want from you. And then you put your own sort of, you do a gap analysis. It's like, okay, I want to learn copywriting or I want to learn graphic design. Okay. I know how to use Photoshop, but I don't know how to run, how to create ads in Photoshop and ads has a psychological thing behind it. And that's why I'm mentioning it. But if you need to learn how to write, uh, create ads using Photoshop, then there might be a slightly different skill. And so you figure out where the gap is and then you go learn a couple hours, maybe, you know, you do a training, or you say, go find somebody and say, hey, I'll work for free just to learn this thing. That's a door, that's a, that's a way in, right? Um, you don't have to have money associated with every single thing you're doing. Uh, another question, Daniel, uh, Daniel says, uh, very inspiring. Thank you very much. Rosemary, very inspiring, encouraging. I hope that you take action on what I'm, what I'm giving you. Hassan, I really agree with Burhan. You always have so many excuses for procrastinating. Yeah, man, procrastinating, Hassan. I hope you're going to spe be speaking about that in your speech coming up. But, you know, procrastinating is something we all suffer with. You should never feel bad about procrastinating because in some cases, procrastinating is a good thing. I've had lots of cases where I always ha I had this feeling that I just needed to chill. I just needed to take a nap or I just needed to go for a walk. And because of that, thing that I did to procrastinate, another opportunity came to me. Like there's a lot of times where I'll stay up uh, working and, you know, it'll be like four in the morning. And then all of a sudden a brand new person will connect, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and be like, Hey, uh, you're online. Can you help me with X, Y, Z thing? And it turns into a client because I was procrastinating doing work online. It's, it's weird how, how things happen. Marlon, Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr, which would you say is better to find good people? I wouldn't say there's a better or a worse. They all have their benefits and they all have their processes. They all take percentages uh, for, you know, for the work that you're, you're either doing or, or doing for clients on those tools. It's not about the tool. It comes down to about your ability to clarify the job that you want somebody to help with, which helps you find the good person that you want. And so, you know, put a process in, in place because just because we're online doesn't mean you need, you shouldn't have a recruitment process. Like we have tons of recruitment processes when we're in person, like you've got to dress well, you've got to wear a suit and tie, you've got to have a CV ready, you know, you've got to, so, you know, have like every, all of these things in place. Online doesn't need to be different. Like, have a process, send them a couple emails before the interview, message them, read their, you know, commentary, go look at their social media profiles, go figure out if you like the person. If, if there's somebody you don't like, don't connect with them on Upwork. Um, you know, like put a process in place so you can vet your people. And with that, you might still have a few people that 
are not so good, they still come through. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's a test. You never hire the first person and you have a, an A player immediately. Maybe you do if you're lucky. But you know what? I had clients, even though I'm, I regard myself as being good at what I do, I had clients hire me and fire me because they thought I wasn't the type of person that they wanted. And you know what? That's okay. We're not for everybody. Just because I like chocolate ice cream doesn't mean that uh, that they must have the, the, that they must like chocolate ice cream too. I don't know why I'm talking about ice cream today. I mentioned ice cream with Chris's talk as well. Uh, Lolika, um, my website uh, boranpatel that that uh, com. Peter put the link in. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I prefer LinkedIn because that's kind of my my home. Those are where my homies are. Um, other questions? Let's see. Kurt, send me his email address. I'll definitely copy that out. Thank you so much, Kurt. What's the best way to promote coaching programs? The same way we promoted the summit. Right. Uh, Janet, that's actually a more complicated question. Like promotion of a coaching program. One is, I'm assuming you have a coaching program. Two, I'm assuming you have a sales process. And so if you have that in place, then you either do organic outreach, like on LinkedIn, you go on Clubhouse, you go talk about what you've done, you go ask questions in groups, you join Facebook groups and you give value, give value, give value. You could run a challenge on Facebook where you run ad, ad campaigns into the challenge to give people a certain result. There are maybe 10 or 15 different ways that you can actually um, uh, promote your program. Uh, Perlette says, love the simplicity but practical uh, format of it. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. Uh, got it great. Cool. So I think that brings me to, we've still got like five minutes or so, four minutes. No, I, um, think, uh, I think, I think you are finished now. Am I done? I starts in, starts 10 past. So you've got another minute or two. I saw okay. part of the team, so I think he won't mind. Okay. No problem. Well, if you guys do have any questions for me, just um, message me, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I do have um, a program coming up, but if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I did mention the digital coaching blueprint, but you know, if you guys want to know more about that, connect with me on LinkedIn and we can, uh, we can definitely um, talk about that. I, I want to actually get on the call on a call with you, figure things out with you, and then we can, we can take it from there. Guys, thank you so much. I had fun. I was super nervous actually doing this, this talk, but it was nice. Thank you. And you are a normal. This is like second home for you. So <laughs> don't feel bad. <laughs> well done. Let's uh, give him a big hand of applause, everyone. Okay. Thank so you. we're all learning a lot. Thank you for those who are staying for the whole day. I hope you are learning a lot. Your LinkedIn profile has uh, have a connect option. Doesn't have a connect option. Um, so on, on LinkedIn, if you, uh, you can follow, but then if you have the, there's three dots next to the profile, it should be on the screen. You just click that and then, and then connect. But if you follow, you can direct message me. So that's no problem at all. I see a few connection requests coming through. So thank you guys.